Leading from above the line is a philosophy that recognizes five sources of inner power. Those five sources are principal consciousness, purpose, emotional mastery, understanding change, and knowledge empowerment. Today we are continuing our discussions with Dr. Theodore Ferguson, who likes to be called Theo, on purpose as a source of inner power. But Theo, before we start to talk about purpose, can you share with the young students what is perhaps a kind of roadmap or some process to develop their leadership? Uh, yes, Kamala, we do have a roadmap to leadership development. And this roadmap begins with the business of introspection. Introspection as a way to help you to better understand yourself, to help you discover your strengths and also to discover your weaknesses. Because if you think you're perfect, then there's no room for development. One of the problems we have uh, when trying to dis do this work, we meet a lot of people who think they are okay. They have arrived, they mm. are perfect. Yeah, it's quite common, especially among professionals, right, who right. believe that education alone has given them all the tools they need to become great leaders. But when you believe you're perfect, you can easily overlook your shortcomings, your, your weaknesses, your faults. And introspection helps you to look at yourself and to come to, to grips with the truth of who you are. And very often you discover that you're not perfect. In fact, you know, I've never met a perfect human being. I am not perfect. I, and one of the things that we, we have to help people to understand is that perhaps they're not perfect. And Introspection helps them to do that, and that open, and that is the self-discovery process now. When you do it, can you get to know yourself better? And now, so that gets more difficult as the ego sort of drives us. I, the more you are trapped in a world, of, in the world of ego, the world, that external world where you're perhaps absorbed with the materialistic, li materialistic life. The, what I call the distraction, the thing that takes you away from getting a, a better understanding of yourself, is the more difficult it is to see yourself. Right. And so that self-discovery is critical to your own development. Because until you can get to a stage where you can acknowledge that you may have some weaknesses, that you may have some faults, then there's nothing to develop. That's then you right. remain exactly where you are, you mark time in life, in exactly the same spot. But when you can recognize, wow, perhaps all is not right with me, you know, um, and I do have some weaknesses, I do have some vulnerabilities, and that is what opens the door now to self-development. So what am I looking for? I'm looking at the way I think, the, the way I feel. When I look inside, what am I looking for? Contradictions in your behavior. Okay. Contradiction in relation to what you know is right, and what you should be doing, and what you're doing. And they're going to come at you very quickly. Once you look inside, you're going to sense it, you're going to feel it. Eh? And once you realize that there is work to be done, then that is what opens the door to self-development. Because that gives you, you know, wow, I need to do better than I'm doing. And then once uh, self-development now, this is where leading from above the line can really help you. Okay? This is where the five sources of power comes in. Okay? Those five sources of power uh, helps you now to be able to grow yourself, develop yourself, strengthen yourself so that you make better decisions in your life. And when you can strengthen yourself internally, you're going to project a, a new aura. You're going to pro people, people are going to see it on the outside. So the you feel differently. Different, you feel differently. You appear differently to others. You are much more in control. You are much more confident. You are more relaxed. People can spot your honesty, people can spot your fairness, people can, can deal with you in a different way because you project certain characteristics now that are much more positive because of who you are internally. So, and when you can project those positive characteristics, we say that now you have a more positive leadership aura, an aura that can win the respect of others, an aura that can win the admiration of others, but Theo, isn't there some truth that we can also develop these things? You talk about this confidence, this honesty, and just show it without looking inside. Uh, Kamala, you hit it. That's such an important point you're making now. 
because we we understand the importance of having a positive leadership aura, as they say, looking good. Looking good. Right. And sometimes we, we set about now to look good, but we do it in a superficial way. That's when we begin to tell lies about who we are. Okay. Right. So we pretend to be. We pretend to be honest. We pretend to be fair. We pretend to have, um, to be confident. And you come out there and you, and you talk loud and you, you dress up in a nice outfit mm -hmm. with your, um, your power tie and your power, power shoes suits. and power suits and all of that. As though that is who you are. But that's a lie. You know? That's just a gloss on the outside. You know what people really look for in a human being? Is what's on the inside. And when what's on the inside can project itself truthfully on the outside, people see you very differently. That's when people really respect you and admire you. That's when you have a positive leadership aura. And that is what's going to win you when you're leadership. That is when you are more likely to attract followers because people see something in you that is special and they, are quite, and they want to follow you, they want to be in your company, they want to listen to you. You become a person of And how does this now wisdom. relate to what we expect leaders to be doing, doing great things? How does this introspection process and development of these sources of power, looking as a new a person, as a leader, how does this relate to building a greater society? Well, every individual comes into the world to do something unique, something special. That is purpose. And when you can discover your purpose, it gives you an opportunity now to make a contribution to the world around you in a way that you can help change the world. And great leaders, the great leaders of the world are people who have discovered their purpose, people who knew why they're here in this world and who were prepared to risk their life just to, to do the things that, to, just to fulfill that purpose for which they're here. We're not here to do, to reason and to rationalize in an external way what, why we're here, you know. All of us come into the world with a divine gift. And I use the word divine deliberately because it's something that is part of our genetic makeup when we come into the world. Something that grabs us, something that energizes us, something that we, we have to do, we want to do in a sense we must do while we're alive, once you discover your purpose. And all of us, every human being has a purpose for their existence. We're not accidents in this world. We all, we all have a special reason to be alive. And when we be, can discover a purpose, that becomes our second source of power. Okay. Yeah, because that points us in a certain direction right. and drives us to do something wonderful, something great. So greatness is within all of us. Not necessarily in the same way, because we're all different. Right. Right? Some of us are called to become great political leaders. Some become great engineers, some great medical doctors. But some become great barbers. Right. Or so great how chefs. do you know that you're actually pursuing your purpose? Oh, I get that question all the time. And my response is quite simple. You will know. Because there will be nothing else that you want to do in the same way. Nothing else will be as important. As important in your life. Because it, you become very focused, you know. Or, or a lot of other stuff simply fall by the wayside now. And you find that you are no longer distracted by this multiplicity of things. But you discover that, that this is my interest. This is where I think, this is what brings me joy. But purpose brings you a sense of joy and togetherness and happiness and so on. And you want to do it. And that's when you can risk your life just to fulfill your purpose. So we often find the young people pursuing one thing this week and then next week it's another thing. Oh, is that? That's just, I mean, that's what you described as such a sad situation that we have in the world especially in so many of our schools. We don't take time to help young people to discover themselves, to discover why they're here, to discover that there's greatness, greatness is possible in their own lives. But more often than not, we simply put them into a, through an education system and we stuff them through it and say, graduate, get a certificate and find a work. Or in Trinidad we say, find a work. Yes. Get a, a job. job. <laughs> and so many people end up in jobs 
more and miserable. I wonder how many of the people that we're talking to are already discovering that. They're in a job doing something that they're not interested in. But they need the money at the end of the month. So they feel they have to continue to be in the job. Or they're forced to sort of grow up before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> correct. Or the job may have status, social status. Mm. But you, you don't like it. And I've seen so many people uh, remain trapped in jobs or following careers that they're not interested in, right up to retirement. Miserable, mm. and they spend most of their life grumbling, mm. wishing for something more. And too much of our humanity live in that state of misery. It's time for more people to wake up and discover that there's much more that they can do in their lives. Right? Life is not just getting a work and getting a good salary. It's yeah. a lot more than that. I do see so many, in so many organizations that people are not doing the job that they would really like to do. You know, what, what, how does an organization treat with that? It's not difficult, you know. I've had the experience of being, building an organization once, albeit a small organization, but one of the things we did in that organization uh, was to take time to understand all our employees when they come in chat to them and get to know their interests. Okay, very often, their interest has nothing to do with the certification that they come with. Right. Right. But yes, they're qualified in this, but there are people who end up in university and doing programs for all kinds of reasons, other than their real interests. So, I want to start talking to people, and you can build a trust in relationship with people. They open up to you. you know, they start to, start to share with you their real passion in life and what they want to do. And when you discover that now as an employer, you have a responsibility, a moral responsibility, to help guide that individual towards their, their, their true purpose in life. We don't do that in most of our organizations. That seems to be a big burden, a it, moral responsibility. You know, it's a moral responsibility. If you say you care for a human being, yeah. how, more, can, how better can you demonstrate that care for that other human being than to help that human being to get their life right? And very often, Sometimes, you can sometimes guide people in the direction of their interests. And you do this in simple ways. You, you get them to go, go and do a course on something that they're interested in. You send them here. Go and talk to somebody there. Have a chat here. Or go and spend, why don't you spend some time, I'm going to call the CEO of this organization or the manager of the department. Go and spend some time with them and see. And very often people come back to you energized. Wow. And then your job now is to help them to follow that path. Sometimes you can keep them employed with any organization um, quite easily, by, by, as I discovered. But sometimes you have to send them on. Sometimes you have to be honest and say, you know, this is not the organization for you. you know. right. But I'm not going to fire you. Right. I'm going to help you to move on. And you'd be amazed how you actually can take out that telephone and make a couple of calls, how you can help that individual to find their way in life. So is it that this kind of energy is symptomatic of someone who has discovered their purpose? Yeah, yeah. when you discover your purpose, you energize. That's why it's a source of power. Because there's something that brings you up when you get up in the morning, you're, happy, you're glad to wake up because there's something to do. You're glad to get out there in the traffic and drive. And you don't see the traffic now because there's something wonderful that you, you, you have to do during the course of that day. And you, you get into a... You get a state of energy that transforms you from a low, from a lethargic state, and you get into a hyper state. And let me say, you know, a lot of kids don't like to read. A lot of people don't like to read. Yeah, that's right. You know, you help somebody to discover their purpose, and now they need knowledge to fulfill their purpose. Reading is no longer a problem. You know, you don't have to push them. Yes, it's what the schools call interest. Yeah, reading along it is your something interest. that they, they discover. They need the information, they need the knowledge. And that kid will transform from being a non-reader to being an avid reader because they've discovered something. And I'm talking from experience in my home, my children. I've seen it. Okay. Yeah. So, so many of us live our lives and, and I, I'm sure many of us feel that we have not yet discovered that passion for whatever it is we're doing. Yeah. When does one actually discover this purpose? Well, let me say never too late. Never too late. Never too late. So it varies throughout. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I've met people who worked in organizations or in the public service for a whole a whole life, and they retired. That's typical. Yeah, and on retirement, they have a bit of freedom now to do what they want, and they can pursue what they love, and then they come alive. They become children again in the world, energized, and they're going to have great lives and great careers. So it can happen late in life, but of course, it'd be wonderful if it can happen That's in right. early life. But we, the adults in society, must must uh, understand that purpose is real, and we must now take time to help the younger ones. Like in the organization, organizations can do it, but it starts in the homes. Teachers can do it. Help the younger ones to discover their purpose in life, what it, why they're here. Because let me tell you, it's one of the, it's a tremendous source of power in a human being when you can discover your purpose. But to help another human being, you must first discover it yourself, because that is when you're going to know, really know what this make thing makes sense. So you can then now share with others energetically because you yourself have had the experience of discovering your purpose. So I also say it's not just for the kids, but the parents, it's never too late for parents in the home to also discover their purpose as a way of helping the kids to find this. Now, is there a link between purpose and principal consciousness? Is, are there some principles is, that, that always underpin our purpose? Truth. Purpose is always about making a contribution to the society around you. It's never selfish. Is it ever negative, doing harm? Purpose is never negative. Because okay. is that also part of our, it's a divine calling. A divine calling can't do you any harm. You know? okay. But What about harm to others? No. It's always about making a positive contribution um, to society. And a lot of the evil people of the world um, and in our societies are people who are astray. They haven't discovered uh, the, the beauty that they have within as yet. And they, they, are, they have misdirected their talents and their intelligence in, the, in, toward, in an area that is really reflects greed and selfishness or power. So, the, so whatever they're doing the, does not reflect the principles that we shared we share. in principle consciousness. No. Yeah. yeah. But um, the other thing to go back to the question of parents and teachers, you know, and employers, you know, nobody can determine the purpose of another human being. So many parents want to tell their children well, what they should many be doing. Tell their children. When, when I was at the a lecturer at the university, this is one of the sad things we had to deal with. We get a lot of kids turning up who had no idea why they're at university. We try to talk to them and they say, well, the teacher tell me I'm good at that, I'm going to study that, or the parents tell them that's the only thing I'm paying for, I'm not paying for anything, I'm going to study that. As though parents have access to what the kid has within. See, purpose is something that is revealed from within us. So purpose is only available to you as the individual. Nobody else has access to it. But we can see some indications of potential. Yeah, you can guide, you can, you can ask questions of your kids. You see, you know, with our children, one of the biggest mistakes we do is spend a lot of time talking to them. Or some people say yapping at them all the time, telling them what they should be doing and how they should. We don't take time to listen to them. You know? That's right. But if, if we take time to listen to our children, and to build a trust in relationship. We're gonna hear a lot of things. But if we decide what, what who they should be doing in life and so on, they may never, never tell us they're really interested. Or if we make a lot of negative comments about certain things and they say, well, my parents feel so about that, I'm not gonna tell them. They keep very quiet. Mm -hmm. But none of us has had, got access to the purpose of another human being. We have to learn to listen and give them a chance to, to develop. Let me give you a story. I had a young man, I was at the university at the time, turned up one day in my office, looking totally lost, and he sat down and he said, Doc, I'm not even sure why I come to talk to you, but I, I just feel, I don't know why I'm here. And we, so we got chatting, 
So, and then he said, well, oh, you see, I'm here because my father told me that's the only thing he's willing to pay for. And that's what you must study at university. And I felt so sorry for that young man, instantly. I saw he had no interest, no passion in it. So we got chatting. And I started to find out what was his, what his real interest was. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, you know, if my father really knows what I want to do, he will kill me. Oh, my goodness. He used his exact words. He said, I want to be a rock musician. He said, that's, that's, what, that's what I want to do. But I don't dare. I remember the very tragic movie, Dead yeah. Poet Society. Yeah. The story of a child who wanted to do something very different yeah. from what his parents wanted him yeah. to do. And I could give you stories of uh, dozens of kids who ended up at university trying to study certain things and they failed out because it, they had no passion for it, no interest. And it's only after they fail out and the parents give up that they had a chance now to find themselves and do what they wanted to do. I have a story of a young man who went to do medicine. You know how we obsess with our kids becoming medical doctors? Doctors, yes. Doctors and lawyers. And unfortunately, we in our medical schools and our legal schools got loaded with a lot of kids who are not interested in those subjects. Right? Or this guy who went to do, parents sent to do medicine. And he was bright enough to complete the program. So he actually completed it. And he came home and he said, hi, mom, hi, dad, I got something for you. And he presented them with his certificate. He said, that's for you. I'm now going to go to do what I want to do. Mm. His passion was motor car engines. Oh. He went to become a motor car mechanic. Very different area. But he became a doctor at motor car mechanics. That was his field. That was his passion. Very successful. And that's where he ended up. I know kids who've done, who, um, again, started medicine and have become IT experts, all sorts of things. So we have a lot of misplaced people in the world, misplaced by us adults, you know, very often parents and teachers. And one of the messages I want to send to the young people who listen to us today in the Europe Purpose is that you have to take time, they have to take time to look at themselves right. and discover what it is they truly want to do and they find the courage now to pursue it, because that is going to be the source of greatness. That's They're right. not going to find greatness elsewhere. They will always be mediocre if you try to do something that you're not passionate about. You might survive, you might keep your salary going, but you become, you do it in a mediocre way and greatness escapes you. And leadership escapes you. Of, co of course, because purpose takes you to the top. People admire, wow, I love this guy and I love the confidence and the passion that he throws at his work. I mean, the great leaders like Mandela and Martin Luther King and Mother Teresa and Gandhi, that's one message we must learn from those guys. They found their purpose, they found their calling, as we sometimes right. say, and they pursued it with passion. Right. And whatever your calling is, you've got to pursue it with passion. Is it then a, a moral irresponsibility to not pursue your purpose? Of course. It means you come into the world with a gift. You've been given a beautiful gift to share with the rest of humanity, and you're not doing it. That has been irresponsible. Okay. You are shortchanging the rest of humanity by not sharing the gift that you have. And so we would encourage all our young yeah. people to share their gift, share their purpose, develop themselves. Discover it first. Discover it first, and then share that with the rest of the world. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Ferguson. Thank you very to much. You. <laughs>